Hello friends, today I'm going to be doing some more prep work for the Future Armour project I've been looking into. And if you don't know, this is a project I've taken on to animate the start of a Future Armour story that Dave from the YouTube channel Blended Planet wrote. He'd already recorded the audio and very kindly shared the first part with me to allow me to animate. And as I mentioned last week, I'll be storing the backgrounds in one project, the characters in another and the episode in a third. And this allows me to reuse the backgrounds and characters in different shots. So it doesn't make it any more difficult to have smaller open tune scenes and smaller scenes are much easier to manage in open tunes. And I've already created these three projects on disc, but if you want to know more about that, then take a look at last week's video where I went over my thinking of exactly why I've done it this way and the reasoning behind it. But today I want to start the project in earnest. So the plan for today is to break the script up into scenes so I know what needs to be in each open tune scene, to split the already recorded audio into smaller files so I can add them to each scene, and when necessary leaving some overlap so I can add transitions between scenes and decide on the exact timing during the edit stage. Then I want to actually create each open tune scene and add the audio track that's just for that scene, and this will give me the exact length of each scene's output ready for assembling later. And then I'll set up the render farm to cover all of the scenes, and doing this means I can make an edit to a background or character and then render all of the scenes out in one click. So if that edit affects more than one scene, they'll all be updated. And I've made a video about the render farm that you can see in the link above and in the description below, so do take a look at that if you want more information. And using the render farm isn't fully necessary, especially for such a short animation as this, but will be useful for large animations, so I wanted to bring it into my workflow to see where it helped. And then I'll set up the video edit, including all of the rendered scenes, and set in my initial thoughts for any transitions between the scenes. And this will then give me a single video file that covers the whole animation. Finally, I'll start work on the animatic for the first couple of scenes, by creating some dummy backgrounds, then re-rendering all of the scenes using the render farm, and you should see how easy creating the final video will be. And that's quite a lot to get through today, so to help I've added shortcuts to each section in the description below so you can jump between sections or jump back to a section to re-watch it. So first I want to break the script into open tune scenes, and this is just to get shorter scenes to animate, which helps to keep parts of the animation isolated from others, so changing the timing in an early part of the animation doesn't affect the later parts. And the obvious first way that I'll break up the scenes is when visually the story changes location, and this will give us clear cuts in the action. But then some of the remaining scenes might still be quite long, so I may need to find a point in those to create another scene break. And I don't want to spoil the storyline, so I'll try and restrict which parts I show you, but I can say that the animation starts like most episodes you've seen. With a short audio sting while shown the outside of the Planet Express building. Then the professor comes into the conference room with good news. He then turns on the TV and then the news story sets up today's episode. So I think the first obvious scene is going to be the outside of the Planet Express building. So let's add that in here. Then there needs to be a cut or a fade into the inside of the building. And this needs to happen before the doors slide open and you'll hear that shortly in the audio. So we'll add scene 2 starting here. OK, so the professor comes in, tells everyone about the good news. There's a bit of a conversation about his invention. And then just here, the professor turns on the TV and presses a button. And I think that's where the next scene should start. And here, Morbo and Linda are interviewing Ember Allure of Omicron Percy I8, and as the interview fades we'll come back into the conference room, so that feels like another scene. And that's where this scene ends. So I might break up this final scene because it's quite long, so I'm not sure just yet, so for now we'll leave it at four scenes. So as you can see here, I've got the script on the screen, now broken down into scenes. And also I've got Audacity, which is a free audio editing program. So I'll just drag in the MP3 audio file. 
And you see that comes to just over 3 minutes 15 seconds. So I just need to split up the audio into the pieces that match the scenes I've just decided on. And there's two ways to do this. If a scene has been split so that you can jump from one scene to the next with no fading, wiping or other transition, then you can simply cut the audio at the point that the cut transition happens between the two scenes. But if you're unsure where the cut will be, or if you have a fade or other transition, then what I'll do is to include some of the overlap audio in both clips. And by doing this, it can be left up to the editing stage to decide on the cut, transition and the timing of it. And to help that, it's worth adding notes to the script. So the first scene is just the intro music up until the point where the door opens leading to the conference room where the professor comes walking in. So if we take a listen to the start of this. Good news everyone! So here is where you can hear the sound of the door opening and by that point we need to have changed the scene to the inside of the room. So we need the audio just up to that point. So if I mark there and then choose from edit, select, from the track start to the cursor, and that takes just the leftmost part, and I can export that selected audio to a standard WAV file in the assets folder. And here you can see the WAV file has appeared. Okay, but I'm not sure of the exact timing for the editing of when we go to the inside, so even though the door sound is this section here, I'm going to include a little bit of audio from before, and that will allow me to decide in the edit exactly how the transition happens. So going from around here. So if I delete from there to the left, so again I'll select the track start to the cursor, and then choose Cut. So now I need to find out where scene 2 ends. So it ends with the professor talking, and the next scene starts with Morbo talking. So let me just find that. So again, I want it directly before he starts talking to the beginning of the file. I'll export that selected audio as scene two. That's appeared, and then I'll give it some overlap. So as soon as the professor finishes talking, there'll be a small gap there. So I need to delete up to that point to remove all of scene two. So now we'll have four smaller audio files on disk ready for creating the OpenTunes scenes. So creating the OpenTunes scenes is relatively straightforward. I just create an OpenTunes scene in the episode project for each scene and then drag the audio clip in and set up the render options. So you can see here in the assets folder I've got the four audio files and the assets folder I created in the episode project folder to keep it with the episode. So what we need to do is to select the correct project from the OpenTunes Open dialog and then create the scene. And then we drag the scene's audio file into OpenTunes. And it'll ask if you want to import or load the file and I've discussed importing or loading before but because the audio file is already in the assets folder within the project location I'll choose load. Otherwise it'll make another copy in the extras folder. And as you see, that adds a column of the audio for that project. And if you hit play, you'll hear the audio. But do make sure that you press the soundtrack button at the bottom here, or you won't hear anything. Then you just need to set up the audio output render options. So open the output settings. And you see the correct number of frames are already set up because of the length of the audio. So we just need to change the output file to mp4 type. So now when we render this, either from this scene itself or by using the render farm, it'll create the correct type of output file. So now I've got each of the OpenTune scenes set up, the audio has decided the length of them, which means they're a fixed length, and so we can render them out directly from each scene one by one or use the render farm to render all of the scenes at once. And I made a video a while back about the render farm, so do take a look at that if you want a more in-depth look. 
there's a link in the description below to that video. And the render farm, or the task list, is a part of OpenTunes that most users either don't know about, or if they do, they find it too scary to look into, or don't know of any use for it. And for me, this project is a perfect use for it, for I've broken a single project down into multiple scenes. So all you need to do is to start a new render project and add each of the scenes in, and then I'll save the farm project to my episode folder so I can reload it later, and then I can render all four scenes out with one single click. So in OpenTunes, you may have a farm room that has the task list manager in there. But if you don't have this room or don't want to use it, you can just go straight to the window by going to the Windows menu and choosing Tasks. And this brings up the Tasks panel that you can either dock into the interface or leave floating, as I've done here. So to use this for the render farm, you need to use the Add Render button and then select a scene. So if I click that, and then inside the Futurama folder, I'll find the Fan Episode Project, and in the Scenes folder, I have the four scenes. So you select a scene, and choose Add, and then you can see the scene in the list of tasks, and if you select the scene, on the right hand side here, you can see lots of details about the scene, including the actual command that is used to render the scene, and towards the bottom here, you can see the final output name for the scene, so if something goes wrong, that's where you'll need to change it. I won't go through the rest of the options today, but some of these I've covered in the other video. So let's just add the three other scenes. So I've got them all in here. And what I'll do is I'll hit save to save this project file. And again, it'll go in the Futurama folder. It's part of this episode. And I'll put it in the assets folder that I created, which is along with the audio files. And you'll see the render file there. So back to OpenTunes. All we need to do now to render all four scenes at once is just to hit the start button. So I'll skip over the rendering because it takes quite a while. It's about 15 minutes for these four scenes. And there's no feedback, just the colours changing on the icons next to each of the four scenes. And you see the four scenes being created on disk. And once you've made some edits, you can simply click the start button and leave your computer at lunchtime or go and do some errands. When you come back, all the scenes are created. So now I've got the output from each shot, I can assemble them in my video editor. And I use Shotcut, which is another free piece of software, for all my tutorial videos and any editing I need to do. And it's a great video editor for basic and intermediate video editing, and I use it a lot, so I'd highly recommend it. So all I need to do is just drag each rendered output into the playlist, and then add them to the timeline. But because some clips overlap, as we detailed in the script, I have to add them on different tracks. And then we can add any transitions that we need. But one final thing, although OpenTunes can handle audio files, and it does it so well, there'll always be some sort of manipulation of them, so you could lose some audio quality from OpenTunes. So to keep the best audio quality, I'll add the tracks separately here, and it'll also help me to align the overlapping tracks. So there we go, that's the basic video editing done, and we can change the timing of it once I finish the animation. So finally, to bring all this together, I'll show you how this setup comes into its own. And it's probably overkill for this short animation, but it'll help me iron out the kinks ready for a longer one. So I'll just go ahead and sketch out the basics for the first couple of scenes, and then I'll render them out using the task list in OpenTunes, and then we'll take a look at them at the end back in Shotcut. Okay, so I've done some quick sketches, I've rendered using the task list, and now I've loaded the project in my video editor, and you'll see the new clips are included, so we can view the whole video. But now the benefit is that when I add the completed background in the backgrounds project, or complete the characters, then re-rendering through the farm and opening this video project, you will instantly see the new backgrounds and characters without having to do any more. However, do be aware that adding extra columns to a background or a character won't bring them over to that scene that has been referenced as a sub sheet, but we'll see that as I work through the project in the coming weeks. At least that's the theory, 
I've used this technique for small projects, but not for larger ones. So I thought I'd try it out with this one to see if it helps. So there we go. That's the scenes decided on, the audio split up, the OpenTune scenes created with the audio, and the process set up to combine them into a single video. So next week, I want to draw up the animatic for each of the scenes, which will help me to check the visual flow of the animation, ready for the final animation. So I'll see you next week for that. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.